discovered the star that the wise men followed to Bethlehem. All shows last about an hour and include a live Sky Tonight portion. To find out more, just search DuPont Planetarium at uscaken.edu. WJDF News Channel 6 would like to thank everyone who donated toys for the Giving Your Best Toy Drive. Because of your generosity, the Bridge Ministry of the CSRA provided hundreds of local children in need with the joy of Christmas this holiday season. It's the true spirit of giving your best, and we thank you. The News Channel 6 Giving Your Best Toy Drive is brought to you by Piedmont Augusta, Security Federal, and Science Co. I'm Jenny Montgomery. Join me next time for a wonderful visit with the one and only Flo Carter. She's a living legend in the CSRA, and her career is fascinating. Be inspired Tuesday at 1230 on Jenny. The News Channel 6 mobile app is now even better. Download it today. After a really nice day today with some pretty nice temperatures, we have some mighty big changes coming our way to your 5 to 6 forecast. We'll have all the details coming up. Now on News Channel 6 at 6, a deadly crash on Fury's Ferry Road. We'll have the latest details on the accident. Plus, warming shelters open in Augusta. What you need to know before you arrive. And new year, new me. How you can keep your fitness goals on track as News Channel 6 at 6 starts now. Live from Television Park, this is WJBF News Channel 6 at 6. Good evening, everyone, and Happy New Year. I'm Jenny Montgomery. Thank you so much for joining us. We begin tonight with our chief meteorologist, Tim Miller, who has a an outlook for us for this first week of the new year. Happy New Year, Jenny. Yes. Tons of storm systems will be headed our way over the next several days. We'll talk about that and how to prepare for them all coming up in just a few minutes. Jenny. All right, Tim, we do appreciate it. Thank you. Coverage you can count on continuing now with the Columbia County Sheriff's Office investigating a terrible collision that left one person dead last night. The Sheriff's Office says alcohol was not a factor in the crash. Graham Lee has more. Just four hours before the start of the new year, deputies responded to a crash that left 23-year-old Carson Downs dead. He was just a, a, a real good kid, real smart, and just made friends. I mean, he was always the light, really. But, uh, yeah, waking up this morning and, and seeing that, it's just, it, it sucks that, you know, that things like that happen. Investigators say Downs was driving a Nissan Altima down Fury's Ferry Road when a Toyota 4Runner pulled into its path. They say Downs swerved into oncoming traffic and hit the 4Runner head on. Downs was taken to the AU Medical Center where he died from his injuries. I, I think, to be honest, it was right around New Year's when I seen him last time, uh, three or four years back. But, yeah, man, it, it's just kind of surreal to to wake up and see that the driver of the forerunner is a 16 year old male from evans and he will soon face charges pritchett says this situation is a reminder of how careful you need to be behind the wheel you never know one little slip up one running a red light one glance at a phone too much to drink i mean Anything could could cause one mother not to ever see her her son or her daughter or her brother or or whoever. I mean, it, it could just happen so quick. The name of the 16-year-old has not been released, but the sheriff's office says he will be charged once the investigation comes to a close. In Evans, Graham Lee, WJBF, News Channel 6. Controversy in Columbia County over a car wash coming to Roundtree Way. The County Board of Commissioners voted to approve a rezoning for it at a meeting recently, and people who live there aren't too happy. Hannah Latier joins us now with the details. Jenny, the Board of Commissioners originally denied approval for the residential to commercial rezoning back in May. But after six months and some changes made by the developer, Ray Ray's car wash seems to be coming in whether neighbors like it or not. 
It will be off Riverwatch Parkway and Roundtree Way. The owner tells me the goal is to be a good neighbor in the quiet residential street without causing loud noise or traffic. But the owner of the property beside where the car wash will be isn't buying that and is upset with the commissioner's decision after he voiced his concerns at the meeting. I've never seen a quiet car wash before. And, you know, they said what they had to say to get what they wanted. And the commissioners gave them what they wanted. So it's, it's going to be uh, an inconvenience for me. I wish it wasn't coming, but they've already approved it, so I guess it's a done deal. The car wash's owner says construction should start in the next 90 days, and it should be complete within a year. Jenny? All right, Hannah, thank you so much. A reminder now that on these chilly days and nights, overnight warming shelters are available. Those include the Augusta Rescue Mission, Garden City Rescue Mission, and the Salvation Army Center of Hope. Tomorrow, Augusta Transit will resume free transportation to all three sites. Just head to the Broad Street Transit Facility. People who work at the Salvation Army say it's a much-needed service. Part of the mission of Augusta Transit is to serve the transportation disadvantaged community. And there are several people who may not have um, much funds, who may not have a place, safe place to stay. We have a bus pass that brings people directly to the Center of Hope. So all you have to do is present that bus pass to your bus driver at any of the stops or across the city, and it'll bring you here to the Center of Hope. Proof of shelter clearance is required at warming centers. You can get that from the Richmond County Sheriff's Office before 5 p.m. or call 706-821-1080 and a deputy will meet you to help you get cleared. In Jefferson County, deputies arrested three men on Friday for trying to fly contraband into Washington State Prison. 17-year-olds Derek Spurgeon and Harvey Simpson of Augusta and 34-year-old Tyler Dean Elliman from Columbia were arrested near the Jefferson County, Washington County lines after attempting to use a drone to fly narcotics, tobacco, cell phones, and other restricted items into the prison. All three men are being held in the Jefferson County Jail. The public's being asked to help law enforcement solve a Burke County cold case. This week marks seven years since someone gunned down 25-year-old Daniel Triplett. The father of three was found on H. Barrel Road near Middle Ground Road on December 28, 2016. Investigators say he left his Waynesboro home and went to Briarwood Apartments. Cold Case Project spoke with family and friends back in 2021. All that I could do is just scream. I could just scream. That's all I can do because the homicide, I thought my son had got us in trouble. Like, okay, I can go get him out of trouble. But homicide? Anyone with any information on the murder of Daniel Triplett should call the Burke County Sheriff's Office. The number's there on your screen at 706-554-2133. There is a cash reward. Every New Year, gyms see a huge increase in new membership and current members show up to work out. Nearly 50% of people with fitness-related New Year's resolutions give up on them, though, by February. Experts say success with fitness goals is only about 40% of the physical work you put in. The rest is psychological. Find a buddy. I mean, I can't preach that enough. You need somebody to help hold you accountable. Find a good partner that's going to keep pushing you and you them in return to kind of keep you going, keep you motivated. Experts say you should give your resolutions at least two months to become a habit so you'll stick with it. Coming up, a cyber kidnapping in Utah. Why investigators say they're seeing a disturbing trend. First, though, a look at what's ahead tonight on News Nation. Mr. Day. A cyber kidnapping of a Chinese foreign exchange student in Utah is causing police to warn families about a disturbing trend. Zorin Shah has more. Tonight, police in Riverdale, Utah, say they found 17-year-old Kai Zhuang in a snowy camping area about an hour outside Salt Lake City, where temperatures dropped to freezing at night. Police say what happened to Zhuang is part of a disturbing criminal trend called cyber kidnapping, and that kidnappers threaten young foreign exchange students and their families, and they demand ransom. Victims are told to isolate themselves and then closely watch through FaceTime calls and or Skype. They're told to send photos of themselves to cyber kidnappers under duress, which are then sent to the parents, making it seem like they're held captive. The victims are told their families will be harmed if they don't comply. 
Police say Zhuang's parents in China alerted them that he had been kidnapped, leading police to discover that he had bought camping gear. They say after analyzing and assessing bank records, purchases over the last month, cell phone ping records, and the camping incident, they were able to pinpoint where he might have isolated himself. They found him in the Brigham City Canyon area with very little heat and food, but with several phones that were presumed to be used to carry out the cyber kidnapping, and that Zhuang only asked to speak with his family and a warm cheeseburger. Police are warning families, especially foreign exchange students, that if you think you're a target of cyber kidnapping, call your local police department, do not send money, and stop talking to the people who are calling you. Zoreen Shah, ABC News, Los Angeles. Oh my gosh, what will, what will the bad guys think of next? Oh no, maybe. Good. Well, let's look at our almanac for today. The first day of 2024 turned out to be a degree warmer than average, 61. It started out this morning at 33. However, as you would guess, big changes in our way of the forecast. Details next. Hey, so just congratulations, Michelle. Thank hey. you, Tim. Coming up, an exciting basketball tournament is happening at Fox Creek High School called Battle of the Border. Here at Goldstein has that and more in sports. By Jamie Casino Injury Attorneys. Weather headlines on News Channel 6. Brought to you by Jamie Casino Injury Attorneys. WGBF sports coverage you can count on. It's a very exciting evening as a tournament is happening at Fox Creek tonight called the Battle of the Border. Many teams from around the CSRA are participating, including some of our top-ranked teams. Going on right now, fourth-ranked Cross Creek is playing against South Fairhope. Early in the game, South Fairhope leading by one, a rebound under the bucket and the putback from Amari Adams, and Fairhope extends the lead 4-1. to one. Cross Creek looking to respond. The deep three is no good, but Ashad Tisby grabs the rebound and lays it in to cut the deficit. Then, with four minutes left in the first, Cross Creek takes their first lead of the game off the jumper from Ty Hurd. He'll go back-to-back -to, -back to extend the lead. And then we have Jaden Priester getting the feed and showing us some moves. The Razorbacks trailed 16-11 to at the end of the first, but that game is still going on. I'll have score updates and more highlights. Grove Town coming up next. That tournament continues, and I'll have highlights later on tonight. The Augusta men's basketball team has been on a hot streak going undefeated in the month of December, and they looked to keep it up today as they hit the road to take on Emmanuel. Despite a very strong offensive effort, the Lions would get the win 85-71, to but the Jags will be back in action on January 3rd as they open Peach Belt Conference play on the road against USC Buford. That game will be at 7.30. Well, Saturday's Orange Bowl was historic, with Georgia getting the big win over Florida State 63-3, which is the largest margin of victory ever in a bowl game. But that win didn't exactly sit right with UGA head coach Kirby Smart, who had some very strong words post-game regarding players who opted out and the changes he would like to see in college football moving forward. People need to see what happened tonight, and they need to fix this. It needs to be fixed. It's very unfortunate that they who has a good football team and a good football program are in the position they're in. And everybody can say it's their fault and it's still their own problem, all right? And everybody can say that we had our guys and they didn't have their guys. I can listen to all that. But college football has got to decide what they want. And I know things are changing. And I think some things are going to change next year. And you know what? There's going to still be bowl games outside of those. People got to decide what they want, what they really want to get out of it. Because it's really unfortunate for those kids on that sideline they had to play in that game that didn't have their full arsenal. And it affected the game 100%. The Bulldogs will open their 2024 season in Atlanta on August 21st against the Clemson Tigers. That was one of those games every time I would walk by the TV, I just couldn't believe that mm -hmm. score. It just kept getting bigger and bigger. Wow. wow. All right. Thanks so much, Kira. We'll be right back. I'm Attorney George. Channel 6. The inaugural Pop-Tarts Bowl went all out when it came to embracing its brand. Look at that. The bowl's social media team had been promoting for weeks that their mascot was edible and that the winning team would literally eat the mascot after the game. Northwestern defeated NC State 28-19, and the winner, and to the winner goes the spoils. Yeah, that was a fun game. <laughs> that was really cool to watch. Very, very well done. It was a big hit, for sure, with, with, with fans. I, it was all over social media. So fun. Is that a real toaster? <laughs> yeah, they, they made it giant.
gigantic toaster. Why? And then they had a big, a huge pop tart come out, and everyone got to eat it. It was very cool. Right. I'll show you later, Tim. There we go. Let's see him right now. See, there he is. Look at that. <laughs> pop tart. Yep. That's the giant pop tart. Man, that looks good. I'd love to dive into that. <laughs> You'll need a hot pot tart tomorrow morning because it's going to be 28 degrees, 27 for Wednesday morning. We're going to be under this cool and rather wet streak on and off as we go through the next several days. What is it about a pop tart? Mm. I love I them. I love them. That's our report for now, everybody. Thanks for watching. Good night.